Good morning, everyone. Who is actually awake? All right, about half of you. I'm not sure this is gonna help you wake up any further, but we'll do the best we can. So, Kintsuki, stained glass, lotus flowers, and clocks. WTF, does this have anything to do with tech or you? Uh, that is an interesting question. Uh, mostly what we're gonna be covering today is a lot of my life philosophies and some of my favorite conversation topics to share. Uh, this is how I've survived my very far too many engineering years, especially as a woman in tech in a male-dominated field. So hopefully you can get some gems out of this, and if not, we can have a grand argument later. You will never influence the world by being just like it. As an engineering manager and a hiring manager, I can hire any web dev. We stamp them out day in, day out, one after another, and you have the opportunity of being just like everyone else. But why would I hire you? If I can have anyone, why you? As we go through life, as we go through our education, our careers, we have stumbles, we have segues, we have times when we got lost, we have times when we got found, we got times when we found ourselves, we got times where we burnt out, we were exhausted, that project sucked, I had a really hard time with it, and now I have a phobia of, you know, photo submissions on every form whatsoever. Time zones, anyone? So in this case, you may not be broken, but at this point you may be just a little chipped. You've had some of those bumps, those scrapes, those problems, but for the most part, you're still a web dev, doing what everyone else does. We build forms for a living. But what happens when you break? What happens when you stumble so hard you question whether you should still be doing this. What happens if you had that weird stint where you were a Java developer? When it comes to Kintsuki, the beauty of it is that all of this pottery comes out of that factory, out of that shop. They all look the same, give or take. And yes, as we use them, they may get dropped, they may get chipped, they may get a little broken. But in the end, it's that brokenness that gives it history. It's those segues, those stumbles, those frustrations, learning why we have best practices, because you did it all of the wrong ways. Having someone frustratingly look at you who you didn't know is colorblind and tell you that the website you just developed was completely useless to them. And you question yourself. Those struggles become your story. And that's the beauty of Kintsuki. As we glue those pieces together with gold, as we learn from each of those situations, you become not just more beautiful, but also stronger. And that's why I hire you. It's not because you're like everyone else. It's because you've seen some shit. It's because you've been through things, you've learned, you've grown, you've developed. You have skills that the rest of my team doesn't. So not only am I hiring a web dev, but I'm hiring someone to make the rest of the team better. And it is not your sameness that makes you awesome. It's your brokenness and how you've put yourself back together. So that brings us to Lotus Flowers.
A lotus flower grows in mud and muck. It is not naturally prone to grow in pristine, beautiful waters like we normally see it in ponds. The mud represents our suffering and pain and delusions, but there's an even deeper metaphor here. In pure water, a lotus flower will not grow. It is in the mud that the nutrients are found. So again, you have this grimy, mucky water that life barely survives in. And a lotus flower plants itself and grows, and above this muck, this pristine white flower blooms. If it were not for this muck, it'd be like, I don't know, a daisy somewhere else. But because of the backdrop, and the fact that you've bloomed into this pristine white flower on this awful, gross location, it makes you more beautiful. But you're not beautiful in spite of the mud and the muck. You're beautiful because of it. You wouldn't have grown here otherwise. So maybe where you came from, rough childhood, remote country, made all of the mistakes in high school, It's not just the technical diversity that matters, it's also the life that you've lived, the hard knocks you've been through. It makes you resilient. It means you can pick yourself up. You can put the pieces back together. You can fight through that really crappy project. You're willing to help your coworkers when they're having a rough time. You can relate. So, when we say bring your whole self to work, which always seems to sound like lip service, we genuinely mean it. It's who you are as a person, not just who you are as an engineer, that again makes you valuable, makes you beautiful, makes you important, makes it why I hire you, why I believe in you, why I support you and mentor you, and give you the leeway you need when things are not going well. Because in the end, we are all people, and all problems that we deal with are people problems. Even the deep technical engineering ones that we fight with, where we're like going really deep into you know, coding for the coding, for the coding, for the transpiler, for the compiler, for the, you know, all the way down to binary. We're all still doing it in order to make it easier for people. Code is a solution to a problem, a people problem. The other fascinating thing about lotus flowers is that they purify the water around it. They make it habitable. They clear the muck, they clear the mud, they solidify the ground so the mud is not in the water, it's in the surface of the ground. Eventually, fish come. And these lotus flowers have these big fronds that protect them from the sun. So even in the dark muck where they used to live, they're now protected and in pristine water. So sometimes when good things are not happening around you, Perhaps you are the good that's supposed to be happening. Perhaps it's you that's going to influence someone else to survive another day, to fight through another problem, to avoid burnout, to prevent another chip or break. Because though Kintsuki may be beautiful, at some point, there's nothing left to glue together.
stained glass. People are like stained glass windows. They sparkle and shine when the sun is out, but when the darkness sets in, their true beauty is revealed only if there is light from within. So yes, again, we're dealing with a situation of brokenness. A window has broken. Or you really like being on the bleeding edge of technology, and we all know that when you're on the bleeding edge, you are the one that's bleeding. So we could either sweep it all up, toss it in the bin, and be on our merry way. Or you can look at this and realize that yes, we have bled because we've cut ourselves on the bleeding edge of technology and it really hurt, but we learned something new and we further tech as it stands. And realize that it has stained the glass. Our perspective has changed because of that experience. We now see it through red colored glasses or green, or blue, or yellow. Because as we've cut ourselves, we've realized we can stain glass. So now we bring in our other experiences, our hobbies, our walks in the forest, that really good food we had yesterday. Inspiration for how the technology can grow and evolve, how it should look, how it should be interacted with and used, can come from anywhere. Sometimes it takes getting away from the computer and away from the code to finally get that inspiration. In World War II, uh, they tried to hire doctoral level women from colleges specifically in math and sciences, to be cryptographers. And they found that it was not the doctoral students that made the best cryptographers. It was the elementary school teachers and the knitters and the quilters. It was those that had the hobbies outside of the world, outside of their domain, that made the best cryptographers. And sometimes it was very genuinely because they were adaptable or because they brought their own hobbies into their thought processes as they were looking at cryptography, and it changed their view. So as you're growing, as you're improving yourselves as engineers, don't forget that, again, you are a whole person with other things that happen in your lives. And those other parts of your life can very well be what makes the difference between a good product and a bad one. It could be the difference between whether the next engineer has to fight really hard with that cryptic tech that you just wrote, or if you documented it, because documentation is a love letter to your future self. When we dim our lights to make others feel more comfortable, the whole world gets darker. Sometimes we're in a room and everyone is talking about something and you don't quite get it or it's something you haven't had time to research. And that's when the imposter syndrome starts to set in. And you're starting to wonder, you know, what do I have to do? What do I have to say? How do I have to ask a question? I have to interact somehow, I have to sound smart so that people will accept me. And that's you dimming your own light. That's you forgetting the fact that we are all overlapping Venn diagrams and we all have portions that are different than other people, that do not overlap. And just because the people in this room have a common thing that they're discussing doesn't change the fact that you still belong in that room. And in fact, those other perspectives, those other tech that you have experience in, those other experiences as a whole, can still have an impact on that room. It's just that 
you'll be bringing outside the Venn diagram parts inside to where everyone else just happens to be overlapping. To use Instagram as an example, we have this perfect pretty picture and it is our natural inclination to look at this perfect pretty picture of their living room and compare it to our back room that's piled with boxes and the kids' toys and the 13th hobby that, you know, you finally chucked in that room because it doesn't fit in your office anymore. So we're looking at their perfectness and, ex and comparing it to what we think of as our deepest flaws. When in all reality, if you just zoom out from that photo, you'd realize that they just managed to like scoot their lives just outside the photo. And you've got a kid hanging upside down from the ceiling somehow on the side, and you've got like SpaghettiOs on the wall. So just remember that in the end, you shouldn't be comparing yourself to anyone else. If you have to compare at all, compare today's self to yesterday's self. What have you learned? How have you grown? How have you become better? How have you become worse? And do you still want to continue on that path? <clears throat> the way we think about things is the way we feel about things is the way we act about things, reinforces the way we think about things. I have this awful project that's coming up. It's gonna be a pain, it's gonna be really hard. I'm gonna to have to stay up late to make deadlines that I didn't get to set. It's gonna suck. How do you feel about this thing? How do you feel about this project now? Do you feel kind of grimy, really hesitant? Not in your stomach, heart's a little too full, chest is tight. So how are you going to act about this thing feeling this way? You're going to begrudgingly do this thing. You're gonna force your way through it. You're gonna hit that screw with a hammer as hard as you can to try to make it work. And when you're all done with this project, the next project, you know it's gonna suck because you just experienced the fact that it sucked. I have a project. It's gonna be a challenge. Conveniently, I have a coworker who has some experience in this area, not as much as would be nice, but I bet if we put our two heads together, we can figure it out. haven't had a chance to work with them very much, so this should be fun. Now how do you feel about that project? Curious? Kind of excited to hang out with your friend? Ready to fight through that problem together? So how do you act? Go tap that friend on the shoulder and be like, hey, I got a problem got to work through. And you put your two heads together and you fight and you argue and you discover something new and you learn, both of you. And you get it done. And now you have a new project. How do you feel about it? You just got to bond with a coworker. You solved cool problems. You learned new things. That's only going to reinforce the fact that this next project could be the same. Life is what our thoughts make it. The way we think about things is the way we feel about things is the way we act about things reinforces the way we think about things.
We've all gone through these cycles. Some have gone well, some have gone poorly. Sometimes, no matter how much of a positive attitude you have, some of it really does suck. But are you going to let that disappointing, frustrating, exhausting moment ruin the rest of the project? Are you going to let that dictate the rest of your career? There are times when people give us feedback, advice, recommendations, <clears throat> and they can hurt. They can be very blunt, they can be direct, they can be cutting, and oftentimes they're not meant to be. It's just that they didn't give you the feedback in the way that you would prefer to receive it. So you can either look at this as they were mean and insulting, or you could look at this as they probably had the best of intentions, and even if they didn't, it doesn't matter, I'm going to take it that way. The very best advice I was ever given. <clears throat> when someone gives you advice, nod, smile, say you'll consider it, and then do whatever you're going to do anyway. That advice could be good advice and you could take it. That advice could be bad advice and you could know the split second someone says it that it's bad advice. But telling them that you will consider it, that you'll just think about it. You'll mull it over for even that split second. Is usually enough to make them feel validated and also to allow you the room to make your own decision. So even if someone gave you feedback that was harsh, that you didn't think was fair, you don't have to take it, but you can think about it. You can decide whether they were right or not, because we are so stuck in our own minds and our own perspectives and our own views that it can be difficult to step out of that and see it from that different perspective. So don't discredit everything immediately just because of the way that it was delivered. Take a moment. Think about it. Sleep on it. Come back tomorrow. You may find that it was good advice. Or you may find that they had a bad day and you just happened to be in their path. I didn't mention tarot cards were also part of this talk. The tarot card of the Wheel of Fortune is near and very, very dear to my heart. And if you look at it, it's because you've got a queen at the top of that. And then you have the part where you're kind of going down, things are going wrong. And then you have the weight of the world on your shoulders and then you're on your way up. Things are getting better. No matter what, this wheel always, always, always turns. Sometimes it turns in five minutes. Sometimes it turns in five years. But it never stops turning. Even at your worst, at the absolute rock bottom, there will always have a point where it goes up. Everything always works out in the end. If it hasn't worked out, it's not the end. And it may not work out the way that you wanted it to, intended to, planned to, but it does work out. So when I look at this, I actually think less of a wheel and more like a clock. And the reason I like the clock is because it has numbers. And it has hands that point to the top. On your way down, rock bottom, on your way up. 
And you can think about yourself this way. How are you as a whole person? Where are you sitting on this giant scale of a clock? Are you sitting at the top of the world and everything is great right now? Feeling good about yourself? Doesn't necessarily mean you've got like the giant head and ego. It just means you're feeling good about yourself. So taking into account the fact that you've got the top of the world, nothing stays great forever, rock bottom, and then things are getting better on this clock, we can go deeper than that. Because you as a whole person are still made up of many different parts. We have the gears inside. So let's pretend for a moment that these gears also have clock faces. And each one of these gears, we'll say the three largest ones represent the three largest influences on your life. Like your family, your career, your hobbies, your friends, whatever, all your enemies. You could be at 12 o'clock on family and at six o'clock at your career and at nine o'clock on all your enemies. So where does that put you? Maybe at 10? Because maybe your family clock is larger than the rest and therefore how your family is doing matters more to you as a whole than the rest. And again, each of these gears spins individually and can interact. So your career gear could spin far more quickly than your family gear. Because maybe your family is more stable or your career is more stable and things aren't going that great at home because your kid is teething and your other kid is sick. So you can break down these gears and look at the individual pieces like parents, siblings, children, spouse, extended family, cousins, aunts, uncles, grandparents, nieces, nephews. And you notice that the extended gear is touching both family and all my enemies. Great Uncle Fred, am I right? And on the career side, you've got coworkers, projects, your boss. And again, projects is touching both family and career because when you're at home, perhaps you're still thinking about the project. Perhaps you're still trying to fight through that problem and it's making you irritable and respond poorly to, again, the whining or the dog that just really wants to go for a walk and you just need this other line of code. You just want to solve one more bug. But these interact with these larger gears. You can break them down and figure out where you are on each one of these. Maybe the dog is sleeping and so is the baby and you're getting a lot done. So your project's doing great. But you really don't like your boss. They just did something really crappy. Maybe they gave you that advice or critique in a way that you didn't like. So understanding where each of these gears are in your life. Where they influence each other can be cool. And you're probably sitting there thinking, okay, that's nice and that's philosophical and how does that actually apply to me? <clears throat> Here's the deal. Say that your family, again, is doing great, but work is not doing so well. When it comes to the great balance that we're all trying to obtain in our work life experiences, this is a great time to say, you know what, maybe I could slack off a little bit on putting forth a huge amount of energy on my family because it's doing well and it's stable right now. I'm gonna put more of my energy into work. 
or maybe work is going well, the project is going fine, you're working with a coworker, problems are being solved, you know they've got this handled. But you really need to be at home taking care of your family or your best friend just had something happen to them and you really need to invest that energy there. It's okay to step away from work a little bit, to slack off a little bit there because you have the ability to understand where your priorities are in your life. And you know, you've got your coworkers gear. That gear can break down into more gears of each individual coworker. Maybe you have three bosses of varying importance. Maybe that knitting project that never ends has a body, a front, a left side or right side, the collar, left sleeve, right sleeve, right cuff, left cuff. Like you could break that down pretty far. So it can, it can very much go all the way down that fractal rabbit hole. But I say start with just understanding where your clock face is at. And once you understand that and kind of gauge where you are and recognize that when you're at rock bottom, things will always go up. And when you're at the top, to stock up, store that energy, save those memories. Because though nothing may stay perfect forever, it doesn't discount that experience. Enjoy it a little bit longer while it's there, knowing that it won't last forever, but it will come around again. And then look at the three largest gears. Just start there. And in the end, through Kintsuki, through lotus flowers, through stained glass, through a very hint of a tarot, two clocks. I hope you can see your world in a new light. Thank you.